Green flavorings. flavorings. Okay. Flavorings. Oh, I, I like that. Yeah. yeah, that's all right. Yeah. That's what they do. Or a weird, it. weird pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, weird pickled things or like uh Yes. Like a weird tortilla chip that's got like no English on it. Uh, this comes from the man who is constantly complaining about gastrointestinal things. <laughs> you know what I like to do? <laughs> I like to go to World Market and get weird food. Get some weird crap. Yeah. All right, let's record. Welcome to the show, everybody. Uh, old and new. Avantix, it's nice to have you here. Video games are good. You want to hear about them? Well, that's good because we're going to talk about them. Well, guess what? Let me check cameras. Camera one, working. Two, working. Three, working. Okay. Working. Right. Do right. it. Do it. All right. It starts in a matter of moments. Uh, hold on. Boop, boop, boop. Yeah. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. Another visitor. Stay a while. This is the Boop Show, episode 189 for October 8th, 2018. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Well, <laughs> dude, you're so into it, you're off camera. That was amazing. Like, you, tra you I traveled. I fell. Yeah. Well, don't hurt yeah. yourself. Don't, uh, don't, right. yeah. Be don't hurt yourself, old man gamer. <laughs> hey, everybody. It is the, uh, the Boop Show. We're back. Uh, Brian Dunaway and myself, Scott Johnson. We're here. We're making it. We're making it happen. It's, uh, I... two e. Oh, look at your thumbs. They're all worked out. Yeah. Two... Like I said, as long as I don't hurt these babies, yeah. this is the moneymaker right there with the video games. I'm all right. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you're talking about video games and not your, 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 your penis. Um, that would be the weirdest way to do this. Is that the way you do it, Scott? You're weird. <laughs> I don't want to talk about any of this. People in Utah, I tell you. Well, here's the deal. Oh, my I, coffee, yes. Brian had a, a hurricane that he had to sort of respond to a couple weeks ago. Guess, and guess what's coming right up the right up the coast from the Florida side? Another one. Dave another, Michael, another the hurricane. hurricane. Worst hurricane ever. David Michael on its <sighs> way up the coast. Uh, and then I had a trip to Ohio last week and couldn't be here. Last Monday I was actually was traveling back home, but it spent I mean, we spent all day. We didn't get home till like eleven o'clock at night. So uh, that is why there were no shows then. We apologize. It was the show that got dinged the most for that trip and for the hurricane. But we're back and we're going to talk about all the stuff we've seen and done since then uh, because video games are happening. In fact, we're entering that phase of the year. Where uh, you yeah. start to get them uh, fast and hard, man, and there's no stopping the release schedule that is between now and Christmas. I'm a little scared. I gotta admit, I, I, I'm a little. I don't know where. I, I don't know what's gonna happen to my gameplay uh, once Red Dead Two comes out. Oh, I know I, exactly. Little, I really am a little concerned. No, I know exactly what's gonna happen when Red Dead Two hits. Everything else goes to the side, and that's all we do. Because that Welcome game... to the Red Dead Redemption podcast. <laughs> you got until, what, the 26th? You got some time uh, right. between now and then to eat up something else. But um, And that's what I've been doing. I've been trying to play some games that I know once that hits, I'm not even going to go near. Uh, and that includes things I want to finish. That includes a brand new game I'm playing now, which I'll get to in a minute. But yeah, Red Dead 2. Uh, well, Red Dead Redemption 2. Because there was a Red Dead Revolver, remember. Uh, I remember that. Yeah, that That's was not, that yeah. was a game. That was a good game. It's fine. It was fine. But Red Dead Redemption, fine. 20, uh, 2010's Red Dead Redemption. What are you doing with the Planeswalker? Oh, because you've been. I was playing just reading. Arena. I'm reading. I'm doing some yeah, homework. Go ahead. Reading your, it's like you're on the toilet in the in the <laughs> '90s with your like Nintendo manual. That's what I used to do. I'd go out and I'd buy it. It's like oh, I got Mortal yeah, Kombat man. two. Now I'm going to spend eight hours on the toilet while I read this before I play. That's just remember that all of Scott's friends growing up, you read those <laughs> manuals too. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and I found a whole bunch yesterday. Wig I found my Icky -poo. I found my Ocarina of Time manual that I have got over here. Right. It, it, it's in like pristine. I don't know where the cartridge is, but the manual is in like pristine mint condition. Nintendo had the greatest manuals. Now Atari had the greatest cover box art, mm -hmm. uh, but Nintendo absolutely had the best manuals. Yeah. Well, the reason that cover box art was good was because it's good to everything inside was. It was. Let's represent it, it, this. It was horrible. It was like game. the least representative of what was actually in the game possible. 
But I loved it for it. I loved that. Imagination. Yeah, I'm not going to complain. It was fine. No. Uh, but let's get right into it. We got some games to talk about. Uh, since we last met, in fact, last Friday, I was out of Convened. town when this happened. No, I had just gotten... Wait, hold on. How did, how did, when, did, when did this happen? How did I get it? Oh, yeah, it's Monday today. So just this last Friday. I was home last Friday. Right. Uh, they finally launched Assassin's Creed Odyssey. What? The much talked about crossover of Assassin's Creed mixed with Super Mario Odyssey. It was a very exciting... Oh, no. Not that? Okay, that's not that's what happened. That's not right. Uh, no, that's not what happened at all. So, Odyssey... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Yeah. Is this... This is the... I thought we just had a Assassin's Creed. Well, if you if by a year ago you mean just had one, then yes. Uh, okay. they're, they went year over year this time like they, like they used to often do. They kind of got away from that in recent years. In uh, 20... Uh, let's see, 2014, you had your, uh, oh, I got to get this straight in my head. Hold on a second. Yeah, 2014, right. you had Black Flag. Or is that 2013? 2013, you had Black Flag. <clears throat> 2014, yeah, you had Unity. And the thing with Unity was it was, um, it was the one that was built right on top of these brand new consoles at the time and not uh, on a PS3 or an Xbox 360. So, so you were, in theory, <laughs> getting... Um, you were getting the you know the hot new deal there, and then uh, that game was a huge disappointment. And had all kinds of problems, and uh, they stopped. Or then they had one more to do the next year, which was Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate, and that game was great. Yeah. That was 2015, and that was great, Brian. That was a good game. I remember you loving that one. Yeah, I mean it was the. It's also the most modern that we've gotten in terms of its time time what period. What the crap have I been doing that I've totally missed out just about on all the propaganda on Assassin's Creed Odyssey? I don't know what your deal is. You're insane. That's what... The, okay, here's what's probably happened to you. How'd I miss this completely? O Odyssey is very much in the vein of last year's Origins, uh, right. except that it's... We're, we're now pulled out of the... Uh, the uh, we're, we're, out of, we're out of ancient Egypt, and we're in ancient Greece now, okay? Oh, this is that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember this one. Okay. It, I mean, it was announced at E3. That makes sense. This Odyssey year. I, I guess they just announced it at E3 this year, and it's just out right. now. So you're not crazy to wonder or to have this feel like it was just one after the other because it kind of was. Um, but remember, in 2015, after Syndicate, they skipped a year. They had no game in 2016. And right. that was unusual for them, and everybody thought, oh, they're working real hard on a thing, and it turns out it was Origins, and they were changing a lot. Origins changed a lot of the As Assassin's Creed uh, formula and I would uh, I guess I would like to tell everybody that if you haven't looked at it yet the new game Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey changes it even further and refines what worked really well in Origins and I think is probably the best game I've played in the series now I'm only about I don't know six hours in but right. it's great so far and it's doing all the stuff I want I'm showing the chat some video from the game uh that is from the male perspective. There's there's two characters you can choose at the beginning of this. You either pick a dude or you pick a lady. Okay. Okay. So right off the bat, before you started playing, did you know there was going to be a choice between the dude and the lady? I did uh, because I had read up on it and was uh -oh. aware of the fact right. that there was a dude and a lady. Now, the other thing I had heard pre-game was that the dude was kind of a meathead and right. that the lady was more interesting. Cassandra or Alexius? Alexis. Alexius. You're oh, right. Alexius. Alexius. Uh, Alexios, I guess. Um, Alexioso. Yeah. And he's just sort of a dude man, you know, like what you'd get in a game like that. He's fine. <laughs> but the uh, Cassandra, Cassandra is this incredibly uh, amazingly well-voiced character. I don't know who the voice actress is, but she's awesome. Just really adds a huge layer to that character, and I find her far more interesting. So I played a little bit with Alexios to get a taste for the guy, you know, and then I went back and played Lady Lady, and I vastly preferred her. So I, I, uh, and that's and that's unusual for me. I'm usually always the dude. I appreciate a choice. I like the choice. Right. I think that's cool, uh, and I like any game that gives you lots of choices when it comes to genders and hairstyles and. Uh, skin colors and all that that's fun for me to, to mess around with builds and things and all that um this game just really just her or him so you just get a, a pretty binary character choice but i appreciate having that choice 
but after you know sampling the the the, the couple of trays there walked away much preferring lady pants than than brute force that's butthole a, over here that's this guy. interesting because generally there's not much thought given to anything other than a simple backstory very simple character development and then everything else is pretty much status quo across the board except for male versus female so you're saying this actually huge character differences there's there's a meathead and then there's someone who has some intelligence sort of i mean you're still doing the same story and right your status and my status as a daughter of sparta is his status as a son of sparta and hmm. his you know the story with the father i won't get into it too much because it spoils some stuff but there's this father thing going on uh is the same story but in the game right. You you are everyone responds to you as if you are dude bro or lady lady <laughs> pants, and I really dude bro I, or lady pants, and I like that because right. it feels it just feels really organic to me. But she's just more dynamic and interesting. She's better better. It may it may actually just all come down to voice acting in this case. This may be a case right. of that because he's fine. She's sort of dub a dub a dub whatever. She just is very interesting to listen to and inflects everything like there's some real that's acting an, going on and it's impressive it's really good that's an interesting choice when you have such a limited pool of characters to go in two totally different directions like that yeah yeah it's interesting that's interesting it's not the first yeah. time they've done multiple character choices like in uh this eh, syndicate you, you actually played both but you would alternate so there were different right, different right. missions you would play with the brother and the, way I like the sister it. it was pretty cool i thought that was all right yeah i think it was a little messy after a while because you'd forget who you had upgraded who to what and some of the upgrades that he got you'd forget to give her so if you would forget while oh, you're using geez, her it's like oh i God, can't you have trouble <laughs> Do you have trouble reading books that flip flop <laughs> back and forth between characters and chapters no jeez man no but if you say Hey, you're you do more damage if you sneak up, up behind a guy and stab him, and then you realize that didn't happen with the guy. You're like, oh right, because I didn't give him that up. Like it's that was a little frustrating. It's it's fine, right. but that's you know. I can see that. But this game and Origins like it are way more down this new road of this is an RPG, and it plays like an RPG. It feels like Witcher three, but in a historical context. Mm -hmm. Although there is some mythology and stuff in there. Um. But uh, your loot is very sort of Diablo-ish. You get in a big fight, a bunch of stuff drops. Ooh, this this uh, sword's better than the last one I had. Or this helmet's better than the one I've been hanging on to. Or this other one's level 10 and I can't get there till I ding level 10. Like a lot more RPG stuff going on. This one also features another RPG sort of standard, which is uh, dialogue choices. So if you're talking to an NPC... That's good. And yeah. they're like, you know, there's something, something. And then now you can choose, no, I don't want to help you. Or yes, I do want to help you. Or tell me more about your weird hat. Like that kind of stuff. Tell me about your weird hat. And so it's way more. <laughs> I feel like that's got to be a real story that you've encountered. It's not. Tell me about you. But I want okay. it to be. I want it to be terribly much. But what about the yeah. horses? Uh, the horses are great. They're, the horse tech is on point here. There's two, there's two hmm. pieces of the tech I'm impressed with. Uh, first of all, the entire experience has been more refined than the last one. Origins, absolutely a beautiful, gorgeous game. Had its, uh, it's had good control. All that stuff was fine. But it felt a little rough around the edges, a little herky-jerky sometimes. It's like they were trying to do new stuff, but they weren't quite done with how far they wanted to take it. This feels like they got that all worked out. Um, for example, in Origins, some of the cut scenes would be a little choppy, but the regular action would never be choppy. And so right. it was just like a weird thing of like, well, when we go into this mode of doing cinematics, it's gonna, it's a little herky jerky. We're not totally set with the tech, but when we're not doing cinematics, we're fine. This game is seamless that way. I don't. There's no difference between I'll, cinematics or otherwise. I, I do have a question. Yeah. One of the things that I always have trouble with with Assassin's Creed uh, games for me, uh, I I want to get into the periods that they're uh, that, that they're focusing on, and sometimes I feel like they keep me at home base for too long and setting up the tech and going, Oh, and you can do this and this. And when we send you back here and there, it, is that, is that a big part of the story this time around? No, there's no, you don't spend a lot of time in quote unquote home base. I mean, you're right. in, you're in an area in the beginning, a kind of part of the islands there where, or the arch archipelago or whatever they call that. 
uh, where you you do kind of have to clear things out of there to progress. And there is a very right. light, late t- uh, title card in this game. Um, it's really surprised me, actually. I was like two hours into this thing, and then, then the title came up. Um, oh, wow. That's fine with me, though. I don't mind that. I mean, I know what I'm playing, so I'm you know they don't have to tell right, me. Right. But uh, it, it, that was just interesting. Um, I mean, it's flowed really well. And I would actually say that Origins had a little bit of a jerky start. Um, they just <laughs> suddenly threw you into a tomb, and you had to get out of it, and they didn't really explain much. Um, this doesn't over-explain either, but it just feels kind of natural what you're up to. There's a cool sequence about uh this experience you have with your father uh, when you were very young that your sets father. things up and then you just sort of move around from there there's all kinds of weird quests that just pop up out of nowhere uh like right now i'm showing video to the chat where he ends up in a cave um this is not a main quest but it had the quality of a main quest and that is also witcher 3 like witcher 3 was great at uh having its main story but also side quests would sometimes get so involved you're like oh my gosh they've really gone all out saying like, you know this is worthy of a whole game by itself sort of main quest line and here it is right. just a side quest this is pretty good at those two uh definitely running into those kinds of events now i don't want people to, to hear me say this and go oh so they just ripped off Witcher 3. it's not like that <laughs> it's just they've taken some smart choices some of which i think they learned from that game and, and others and integrated right. it in a way that still feels like an Assassin's Creed game. You still have some fun stealth and great assassin techno- or, um, uh, mechanics. And you can play like a sneaky dude or you can play like a crazy warrior. You can play any way you want. Uh, sneaky dude with some sneaky nuts? Is yeah, that sneaky nuts. You know what sneaky... You know, right. Yeah, sneaky yeah. nuts. Everyone likes a sneaky nut. I can't, I can't ever hear you say sneaky without thinking of that. Yeah. Uh, Interesting. I also will say that the assassinations and the killings are the most brutal the game has ever portrayed. My gosh. Just bloody... Oh, put this spear through one side of his head and yank it out the other to finish him off like just a brutal but as you'd expect from the era right like this is this is ancient greece after all everyone's a little bloody assassin's creed uh story length game length has increased over the years Mm -hmm. uh origins was a uh heavy game at like 26 hours to beat the main story yeah. just going through yeah. how far did you make it through origins i beat i went through the whole thing i didn't 100 percent it wow. yeah i didn't 100 percent right, right. it because i didn't right 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 uh, I, I wouldn't i actually kind of wanted to that's but his main story that's his main story 27 yeah. hours i wanted average. to do the entire game top to bottom 100 percent all side stuff i didn't get to do that uh because of time however right. Uh, this game is clocking in at some are saying around 40 for that main story and another yeah, hundred long, of side content. Yeah. So it's a lot. How long to beat it hasn't got in, uh, all the data yet, but some people are saying about 27 and a half hours for main story. Uh, if you just kind of cruising through there, but I, I bet it's probably going to be longer. Do you think you're going to be able to, uh, put this story to bed before Red Dead comes <laughs> well, out? Well, see, that's the question, isn't it? Like Red Dead looms large over all all we survey uh right. this game included so i don't know the answer to that i would really like to and i can tell you so far i'm having a ton of fun like as much fun as i've had with an assassin's creed game ever um i really don't tire of the formula anyway i love mm-hmm. historical settings they pay so much attention to detail everything from you know armor textures all the way up to location stuff um it's easily the most beautiful game they've made in this series uh, and I thought Origins was gorgeous. This is just breathtaking. I don't know how they've done it, but it's a beautiful game. And they've really tweaked stuff that, you know, in the past you may have said, ah, oh, that could use some work or whatever. It just it feels smoothed out, polished up. It feels like a more complete smoothed experience. Smoothed out, polished up, yeah. My, on- my only complaint is this. Um, oh, I, another thing to say positive about it, the naval warfare stuff that was in Black Flag is back uh, right. with some refinements. And it's that stuff's great. I love it. Very happy to have that that ship stuff back in the game. It does not take you out of the out of the story or make it feel weird or, or disjointed from the rest of the action. It feels great. So big fan of the naval combat stuff, and I'm really happy to see it back. That was the best thing about Black Flag. Black Flag. And up to this point, I would say that of all the Assassin's Creed games, Black Flag remains you know in my top two or three at the worst. And uh, this does a lot of things Black Flag did really well, despite the difference in setting. But you I know, think Black Flag was paced paced well. I always felt like I was having fun. Yeah, Black Flag's an awesome game. 
And this just yeah. takes a lot of that and moves forward with it. it. Takes a lot from Origins and moves forward with it. And some cues from other games that are successful at you know creating story and RPG and all that. Uh, there's some Abstergo stuff, you know, where you're in the future. I've only seen one tiny scene at the very beginning of the game where you're getting into the uh, Animus to to connect again and learn this stuff from the Grecian period, and that's it so far and that's about how much i like <laughs> i want just a little taste of it to remind me that oh yeah right this is all part of a bigger overarching conspiratorial whatever that's why we're traveling through time different time areas in these different games but they don't spend a lot of time there at least not yet those are typically the weakest parts of the games for me in the past so far this one's it's barely there so right i'm totally 100 percent cool with that um Really like it, though. Now, I know as well as you do and everyone listening to this or watching live, when that damn Red Dead comes out, all anybody's going to want to do is that. So this is all going to, I got to, if I don't hurry up now, it's going to be we're like. Just, we're just filling time right now, right? That's what we're doing. Well, I wouldn't say that because I'm having, I think this is time well spent in a game that's awesome. Right. But there's no question in my mind that, that this is, I'm not going to get done before I, that you hits. You think this is a. Do you think this is a how's the sales going on with this thing? Because I was wondering how it, this game was selling because I it hasn't been on my radar very much. And it, it be honest with you, I'm kind of on a, a little bit of a hold with games because I know Red Dead is coming out. Now I can pick this up at the Red Box, I can rent it for three nights for seven bucks. Yeah. I could probably get, you know, a good 10, 12 hours through yeah, the story. You could and you should. I mean, right. I think that would be the way for you in particular to do this. Um I plan to beat it at some point. It's just that when the damn, when the Cowboys come to town, Scott, Scott's <laughs> going to have things to do. And it's going to be real hard for me to, to, to ignore that. And I won't ignore it. I'm going to have to play that and play the poo out of it. But I'll get back around to it. I kind of hope they skip a year next time because I would like this to, you know, this let this one simmer a bit. Um, also, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, sales-wise, it seems to be doing well. The uh, uh, Critically, it's been extremely well uh, received which is always a good sign uh players seem to like it it's um i suspect this will do really well for them and uh, origins did really well so i i have no doubt that they'll they'll find success with this game and yeah the good thing about the assassin's creed i've never really been in a hurry to get any of these games but i always eventually pick them up usually like uh and if, if you know if, if it's near the holidays, I'll eventually go. It's like, oh, you know, I have everything else. So give, give, give me the Assassin's Creed mm -hmm. thing. That's how I got the black flag. That's how I got the black flag. Oh, I never answered your question about the horses. So the horse tech's on point. It's all good. I mean, maybe Red Dead will have better better horses, but these are great. D good, you great think? horses. I mean, I don't know. Maybe. Those were the best back in the day, and nobody else even compared. But these Assassin's Creed horses are pretty damn good horses. So I, I can't say I can't really say anything bad about these horses. They're fine horses. As horse you think as video that tech, you think you ever install the horse tech from uh, Red Dead? Well, look as as video game horses go, right? It's a it's a pretty strong horse. You know I don't I don't like horses, Scott. So I know you're not a fan. Uh, but then uh, and that's the thing that nice about Origins. You could also get camels in Origins, but they don't they're not in this one. Um, anyway, uh, and then the other tech I really like, which is a total small side thing, but um, he, uh, him and her, uh, everybody, actually, all the NPCs, everybody's got really good arm vein tech. And what I mean by oh, that is... Oh, yes! You the get up arm close and it's just kind of blue right under the skin, yeah. but it looks yeah, it totally look real. It makes these people seem very organic. It's very strange. Right. So You know, a couple of years ago, it was all about uh, when Laura Croft came out with, the, with all the great hair tech, mm -hmm. and you had to basically upgrade your uh, video card to even get any... Of that kind of stuff, I yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm enjoying the vein tech because that's 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 things running underneath uh, models and the skins which are translucent, which is like real life. Because yeah. we think of our skin as being very opaque, but it's 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 got a little bit of Get a little something you know, there, a little bit see through. Yeah, yeah, it, it just a little bit more bridge that gap so <laughs> that I think I'm actually uh, looking at something real. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm totally with you. Um, all right. Brian, why don't you tell me now about I, your time in uh, uh, Magic the Gathering Arena, Urethra. Arena. So, uh, the closed... Ba if you're not familiar with Magic the Gathering, you should be. It's been around since, I believe, 1994. And by the way, I am no Magic the Gathering expert. I'm a newbie. Super noob. Yeah. So, I'm going to say some things, and I'm going to claim some things, 
and then some of these hardcore heavy hitting magic gatherers are going to tell me I'm wrong and that's fine correct me because I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong yeah but uh, a couple of months ago my my children came to me and said let's play magic the gathering the card game and I'm like uh, in physical real life and I was like eh, I'm not really into those kind of games I've played plenty I never have been able to get into it let me tell you this game has taken over my life really and our family's life real easy the thing about magic is easy to get into mm. easy to learn how to play hard to really master. hard to, hard to master yeah just like you would think yeah. which is great that's what you want is that is that what i want uh, that's what i wanted okay. because i was a lot of these other games i was like this is stupid i don't understand the point of this i don't get it and it's probably one of the reasons why i never did like uh you know hearthstone or none of those other games i kind of liked you know uh legends mm -hmm. that was okay it it kind of it kind of you know scratched some itches i like but the, now the, I, the multiple lane stuff in legends is pretty cool that is absolutely their that's their that's their call yeah. i mean if if you want it, it really adds a really unique uh concept to the game and i i wouldn't mind seeing it branch out other places too uh the the reason why i'm talking about it here on the boob show mm. is because uh, about two weeks ago, they they closed down uh, the closed beta of Magic the Gathering Arena, uh, which is their latest incarnation of the digital version of their card game. Some would say they, they're was, only because other, uh, the other yeah, stuff the other they've done was, has been poop, garbage. Yes, Magic, yes, Magic the Gathering online not well received mm. for very good reasons because the game is, even though it's simple, uh, is is hard to put that gameplay into a I take a turn, you take a turn uh, kind of play yeah. because each turn in Magic the Gathering is five phases and which requires you to make multiple choices. And then when you combat, it requires the other person on the other side to make choices as well. And that can get very cumbersome uh, and slow down a good game real quick. Uh, Magic the Gathering has has uh, attempted, the arena version has attempted to make that better by making things where you don't have choices happen automatically. So like on the old game, you would make choices for everything. Magic Gathering Online, you had to make choices every time and it was, it was very tedious. Now, uh, if I don't have a play, uh, then it just flips to my turn and it goes over to the other person. Yeah. And it, it has nice little ways to kind of let you know you're you're taking a little bit long. A little fuse comes up and goes, hey, you're taking a little long, man. You might want to do something. Mm. Uh, and everything, it really prompts you and lets you know what to do uh, right as you go along. So a beginner could play it. It'd be well, kind of difficult because once you once you get in there with some real, you know, Magic the Gathering players, it gets kind of tough. It's, it's, got, it's got a... Um... They finally have kind of the pop they needed to the polish and the f finish of the game. The, pre Absolutely the previous right. incarnations were rough in that regard, but this is like a nice looking animated, you know, get excited about it sort of version yeah, of this game. It, and that's pretty and it's, good. It's good all the way down because uh, Magic the Gathering has two components to the card. Usually there's, there's the art part, which is at the top, and it gives you kind of the idea of how much mana you're, it's going to cost you to be able to play. By the way, quick talking about Magic is... Uh, uh, how you play mana is you have how you play how you play Magic the Gathering is you have mana cards and then you have creature cards and then you have like sorcery cards and based on the amount of mana that you have on the board determines whether you can play a creature or not or uh, sorcery or other instance and that kind of stuff. It's way more is there's way more to it than that, but that's kind of the basics and so. Uh, Man, I'll tell you, I've just I've had a blast with this. You get to create your own decks just like you do in the really real world. Mm -hmm. uh, you can buy cars just like you have in the really real world. And I bought a uh, Guilds of Ravnica, which is their latest block. Mm -hmm. I bought one of those today. It was a plane, Planeswalker deck, and mm -hmm. that may no, make no sense to you, but uh, it makes sense to players. And it allowed me to bring that deck into the digital arena so i had a code when i bought this deck that i have the physical copy and i also have a copy in the game well, that's and cool. by the way yeah. it is very cool yeah. and you by the way i i played it and i lost 10 times in a row <laughs> 
may not have been a good but, deck, turns out. You know, it, it you know, this uh I the one of the things I like about Magic the Gathering Arena versus something like I've played Hearthstone, and I always felt I never felt like there was really any true incentive to get better at Hearthstone. I'm not bashing Hearthstone, I'm just saying it's a different type of play. Mm. And I never felt like I needed to get any better because it has such a balance with win lose. Mm. I could literally just eh and I would still win, mm. you know, percentage of time. Mm. I would I would never have any, you know, any reason to get better. I would never learn from losing when mm. I was playing Hearthstone because I just didn't care. Like I was like, okay, I lost that one. Next. I just want to open some cards. I want to see the cool art. And that's all I was getting from that. And uh, whereas this, you if you build a bad deck, you're gonna lose every time. Yeah. You every gotta, time. You better have a good deck. Uh okay, two things right. that I want to say about magic. One number one is I like that it's the only digital card game now that also has right. a physical component out there, like an actual deck that you can have this interaction between. I think that's really cool. Uh, right. That's number one. Number two, their logo always looked like a hair pick. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Hold that it up does. again. It does. It looks yep. like it looks like a pick. That's the that is actually the Planeswalker symbol. Yeah. Uh, this is their 25th anniversary uh, this year, and uh, that's that. Yeah. That's the deal. You that's need the, to, that's that pick thing. You there. need to suss out like a knotted up little wad of hair you got or something. Right. I got it. I got it. Plane, no, I was ah. Planeswalker pick is what you're doing. The PP we call it. The PP. I, I'm with you because I think that was the thing that finally got me over uh, my collectible card game, you know, s stick. Because I wasn't able to. I I, I just couldn't get into it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get into it, and I don't know if I never could feel connected to Hearthstone because there was no physical representation. Do you remember the uh, Blizzard uh, card game they had for? Yeah, a while? the physical card game. I still have a bunch of the old cards, but I used to. I have yeah. some that are unused for items in WoW, and that was a cool. That was a cool connection because cool. you could do stuff from there into Warcraft and get pets and mounts and stuff that you couldn't get any other way. So I did like that. Right. But you, the the way that timeline worked is they they were all huge Magic the Gathering fans at Blizzard. Uh, at right. one point, somebody suggested, "Why don't we make our own? We'll base, base it on WoW." And they made a physical CCG and built that out for a big long time. Uh, the creator or the guy who was running that at Blizzard was Corey Jones, who ended up leaving and now is the founder of. Um, cryptozoic oh yes yes so if you've heard of cryptozoic games that's him anyway um when they decided to chuck it everybody was like whoa how come you're chucking it this is not cool you can't chuck it and then like six months later they announced hearthstone so i think that that was their plan yeah. uh was they realized you know what what are we doing we make video games let's make a video yeah. game and they made a video game so and, and this model of of the way magic the gathering is done this this model is is hard to keep up with uh with magic the gathering yeah because they they do blocks you know they, it's it's just like a constant cycle these guys have such a well balance of how cards are done and is is just hard i would hate to get in this into this market because it, it always looks simply like oh i could do that i could make these cards and yeah you could make one for about a round and you can make some really cool ideas but unless you really put into it what they're putting into it mm. i just I you just know what the know fact that you're it. getting this much out of it makes me want to play it because i you gotta I, play it i'm kind of tired of ccgs across the board don't really care uh, about right. them that much i've kind of just gotten bored with them all i don't play hearthstone anymore i really liked eternal for a while but kind of fell off of that i think that um like you said legends elder scrolls legends is good but again it's you know if you're not into it you're sort of not into it across the board and the way you're talking about this and the fact that you're brian dunaway makes me think right. i should check it out yeah. Dude, you should get it, and we'll play through Discord or something. We can play a physical one. Also, the arena isn't isn't ready for uh, direct play. I don't think it's open beta. By the way, uh, I, did, I don't know if I mentioned that or not, but they I closed so. the beta yeah. a couple weeks ago, and then they reopen it to open beta for everybody. Uh, you can totally grab it uh, and match at the gathering. I think it's uh, just look up MTG Arena. Uh, it's free to download, and you'll get some uh, decks right off the board. Uh, to to play with, uh, chat room says that if you're playing in their their version of arena mode, right, uh, which is like what Hearthstone does, um, basically, it's, you know, you open cards and play what you get. Yes, uh, that yes. you keep those cards. Yes, uh, that is not true in arena and Hearthstone. You play them and then as if you never had them, if you don't already no. have them. But uh, that's good. That seems great. Yeah, 
the good thing about arena is there's so many cards uh, they have such a pool to collect from that even if they gave you a whole buttload of cards they got a whole buttload more they can give you so you can spend as much as you want in this game or you can just like i do you know i just i just keep on hacking keep on hacking and going but then occasionally like i said i like this benefit i don't know how long they'll be doing uh where you buy these planeswalker decks which are like I think this one was like $13 or something for this Planeswalker deck. And that gives you uh, 60 cards, yeah. uh, both in physical form and in the, uh, in the game itself. Uh, and I, like I said, I feel like the price is very reasonable for what they've been doing. Yeah. And I don't feel like I have to go too far to win. Um, I've played some decks where I just seem to win one after the next. Yeah. And then I play other things and it's like, it just always loses. And until I tweak it, I'll continue to lose. Are these players, uh, or are you playing AI mostly? No, you're all all players. Uh, I've been playing against uh, players completely. The first week, I I started playing it the first day it came open, which was a mistake hmm. for a fairly for a noob because they try to pair you up with uh, you know same level people, and everybody was in the same level, hmm. but not skill wise. Skill wise, they were <laughs> way above me. Yeah. But we had the same you know we had the same cards essentially, yeah. uh, and and I was getting wasted. And I waited about it. I played and lost and learned. That's the good thing about Magic the Gathering. Every time I lose, I learn. Mm. And uh, I get a little bit better. And so, uh, but now it seems a little bit more balanced. It seems like some newer players are coming yeah, in. It takes and, time, uh, but sure. Can, yeah. It's like okay. uh, it's, uh, they always say, you know, it's not the cards. It's how you use them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I do like, I, I like the slick look of the arena too, because some of the cards... Uh, have these really good animations. You'll throw a you'll throw a card on the on the on the battlefield, and it'll have a really cool dragon come up or something. Go, mm. Doesn't do it to all of them, so it's just it's just so just like, special. When like legendaries and stuff like that. Sure. Yeah, like legendaries. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, another thing too, like what they did. Uh, they the cards like I I don't know if I was telling you this earlier, but the card is kind of broken up in two. The top part is usually the art, yeah. and then the bottom it'll tell you the abilities and you know any type of uh, any type of rules to the card, and we usually give you a little a little splash and tell you about uh, you know some backstory or a quote. But when you're playing an arena, uh, you see the full card when it's in your hand. But then when you play it onto the battlefield, it just gives you the gra the art on yeah, the battlefield, which is what so you want. Like makes it smaller. That's right. what you want for two reasons: one, uh, that's all you need to see, and two, magic cards. I'm just going to say this out loud, everybody. Sorry, they haven't really changed since '94 in terms of flourish. <laughs> You have m amazing art, don't get me wrong, but it's Great jammed art. into the most generic layout of all time, boring fonts, ugly lines, like it's not it's not a yep. good looking game outside of the art itself. And by game I mean just the card game. This video game looks it, great. But my right. point is like I, I understand they can't get too far from that or else they get themselves in trouble. But yeah, Brian's holding up one up there. See that? And and the, the the this part of the card and one of the reasons why well first of all they have some really uh f they have some is for clarity because they do make so many of these cards yeah but you can combine so many of the blocks together uh, it it's according to what play you're making there's a bunch of different play modes and right. some of these play modes will allow you to you know do blocks for a long periods of time and they even have some that where you can just you can go all the way to the back. So the reason why they had kind of stuck with this style and art is for consistency. But you know, that's that, look at horrendous. The back of that cover. That that back of that cover is not good. But you have oh, to do it's that. Never been good. If the, the reason why I had to do that is because if you mixed in, if you were playing a legend, uh kind of if you were playing like a if you had all the bunch of cars from way back when, you would need them to be consistently the same on the back. So you couldn't see what they were. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, so that's that's the reason why that. But I'm with you. I I that was the first thing I hate. I was like, eh. Yeah, I hate yeah. the backs of those cards. Are so ugly. But uh, there are some newer cards. Uh, that they're a little more expensive. Uh, but they've got like full bleed art. Oh, and so the art goes all the way to the outside Ooh. and it's transparent the writing. Full and stuff. It looks bleed. Really good. They're expensive, mm. but they're very nice. I like some full bleed. I'm in. Full bleed, baby. All right. Go to the edge. Magic the Gathering Arena. Google it. It is currently in open beta. Go give it a shot. It'll be free to play when it lands uh, out of beta, I'm sure. Well, it's free to play now, but right. that means you'll, you know. I don't think there's any more wipes. I think the closed beta had the last wipe. Uh, oh, no I, more I wipes. So any of your progression, your progression right now is getting saved for good? 
I I think so. Now I'm gonna say that, and someone's gonna go, "No, Brian, you're fist to be really disappointed." Yeah, and they're like, "No," but I I think so. I it's like I read somewhere that it was no more wipes, but I'm, I could be wrong. Mm. Oh, MTG, they say it was uh, released in '93, uh, the right. the year we got Jurassic Park. Hmm. Oh, that's right, because it was the 25th. This 2018. That makes sense. It uh, was '93. Yeah, correct. There you go. Uh, all right, let me tell you a little bit about a little game that I barely touched, so I'm not going to talk a ton about it, called Switchblade. <laughs> Do what? Uh, not Slingblade, because that'd be all about French fraud taters. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's this weird MOBA game, and right. I say MOBA because that's straight up what this is. It's uh, like a competitive sport where you're inside of a little tank vehicle. Uh, they're more like ATVs or dune buggies, but they, they have different abilities. Some are heavier duty than others. Some are small and agile, but a little weak. So if they get hit, they're going to die quick. But imagine a team. you got a team full of players, and they're all playing these different kind of characters. Some are tanky, some aren't, blah, blah, blah. Some will help heal you, those sort of things. And you're in this futuristic sort of future sport um, kind of arenas, uh, outdoor. It's a very pretty game. looks really nice. And uh, you've got these abilities, E, or Q, E, R, and just like you do in a MOBA. Um, you also can swap ships out. So you can have two going into battle, and in the middle of the fight, you can go, oh, this one's just not doing it. I need my heavier one. And you can bring that guy in. And there's a cooldown for how long you, it takes for you to bring another one up. Um, you have aiming and shooting mechanics like, in, like a first-person shooter. You have your main ammo is unlimited. And uh, you so you never run out of bullets or anything like that. Uh, you have, uh, areas where you can get healed, but also it's your, you know, your, your towers. And when you go to your towers, you're protecting those and trying to keep the team from stopping them. I mean, we all, we know how to play a MOBA. That's what this is. It's a freaking MOBA with little cars. Uh, it's, it's, it's also a shooter, but it's still a MOBA. Like straight up, they've taken all the ideas from a MOBA and put it in this game. Right. Um, it's in early access right now. I got a code for it and thought, yeah, I'll try this out. Why not? Who am the I? The Fog to? Hog. I like these game, these names for these cars, though. Oh, it's great, right? It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, and your job is to take down their towers and get to the point that you can go and take their base, like you guessed it, a MOBA. Uh, a MOBA. But it's very actiony, very Monday Night Combat, very. Um, it's another good example. Uh, what's something else in this vein that didn't really take off that I? used to like i can't think of it anyway i don't try to get an idea i'm still trying to get an idea of the gameplay because everything i'm seeing so far is either uh concept art or uh well actual so. gameplay and you can find a ton on youtube but it's like i said i mean you're just taking down towers and moving your way down the lane <laughs> like it's right. just it's moba it's moba 101 now when you take the towers over um, I believe, or when you kill them, they just become yours after a time or something. It's that kind of like control, push and control kind of thing. Uh, right. Not 100% sure on that. But the actual combat's very fun. Um, I feel like I could hold my own. It's it's a little more skill-based uh, shooter-wise than you, than you might expect. Hmm. Graphics are nice. Music's really cool. It's got a nice vibe to it. It's still early access, so there's some rough edges. But I think it's, for what it is so far, kind of impressive. Uh, I don't know, you know, if it'll be the hot new thing or not. Uh, Can but, I ask why it's called Switchblade? Uh, I'm just curious. That's the part I can't honestly tell you because there's nothing to do with a Switchblade in here. Like, there's really? no, like, not a traditional Switchblade. I mean, I guess you're just, I don't know what it means. <laughs> honestly, I don't know what they mean by Switchblade. <laughs> it doesn't, there's no, like, backstory where it's like, ah, yeah, Switch Switchblade. Blade. It's like the future. Like, there's no, there's no reference to it beyond the name. So I don't know. Right. I really don't know what that means. But if you're into that sort of thing and you're not tired of the the MOBA sort of thing, you know, there's, there's what do you call them, uh, minions that go up and down the lane. You take those out for experience points, and some of them fly, some of them drive. Uh, you got your, you know, if, uh, your minions move forward, and if, you're, if your minions are ahead of you, they'll attack your minions before they attack you. Like, this is just Dota, League of Legends, Heroes of the Storm 101, like, that's kind of what they're doing. The difference is it's a third-person action shooter behind the behind the car, and it's their take on on this idea. So, again, I haven't played it a ton. Not much else to say except 
seems all right. Yeah. Seems like a thing. You know, I, 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 so did you say you had on the PS4 or the Switchblade was on the PS4 or the PS4, PC? Xbox, and PC. My version's on PC. PC. Yeah. And again, I don't Regret? know if those are, I, don't, I should say, I should say those are coming there because the, the, the early access is only on PC. No, nobody else has got right. like an early access thing going on. Right. Um, but you, what do you, what do you mean by regret? What were you saying? Regret something? Oh, regrets on getting on a PC instead of a PS4. Seems no. like it'd be a great PS4 game. No, not at all. It's fine on PCs. I mean, I didn't get it yeah. there. It's, it was like I said, it was a code, so it didn't. I didn't right. get to pick what version I got anyway. Right. Um, but uh, it seems all right. I mean, I'll just check it as it goes. I wonder. I wonder what audience. The, the main thing with these games is how many people pick it up and and get into it. I presume right. this will be a free to play experience, and so. Um, that being the case, it may end up with a with a big following, and if that's the case, that could be interesting. I mean, I only want to play a game that a multiplayer game like this is only good if you've got a huge base of players that are being matched, and that's more fun. So right. So don't don't try if you're listening. Don't try to remember the name Switchblade. You'll never remember that later on. You'll be like, what was that game Scott was talking about? No, it's a dumb Switchblade. name. It's a dumb no, name. No, look for look for uh what Car Moba. What do you think? Car. <laughs> I don't know if that'll work either. I think you have to remember Switchblade, but I but I feel bad that you do. But you Ooh, do. Heavy Metal Machines. That's the first thing that comes up. What is that? I don't know what that Car is. Moba. That sounds all right. Switchblade is number three, but oh, this looks even cooler. That sounds all right. Holy crap! Don't even don't even get me tempted. Too many games. Look to at play. that. I'm gonna get this game. <laughs> Forget that crap Scott was talking about. Look right. at this. Oh, this looks like uh uh oh what do you call it? Oh. Which one? The heavy metal machines. Oh, you know what it is. Car battle MOBA. It's by, mostly like, positive. Just came out September the nineteenth. It's that series. Uh, 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 hold on, uh, it's Twisted Metal is what you're thinking of. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's what exactly it looks like. Yeah, I used to love. Yeah, it looks like fun. I used to guess love. what Brian's reviewing next week. Heavy metal machines. That sounds all right. I have to look that I up. Like it. All right. If it's Mad Maxi, I'm in. You know that. Yep, I'll Mad Maxi. Brian, tell me about... I've played this before, but tell me about Paper Monsters. Oh, if you were underwhelmed by Scott Switchblade, wait to hear about Paper Monsters. Mm. It's like Little Big Planet meets Mario meets an occasional physics game. It's kind of dumb, but <laughs> it's kind of fun. It I really know, is. I know I, the developer know, of this, by the way. I've talked right, to him before. I, you know, yeah. And at first, I was like, you can't help but to draw comparisons when you see it. When you first start playing, you're like, oh, this looks like this game, or mm -hmm. it looks like that game. And I was, I was worried because I was like... Oh, uh, they're just gonna try to recreate, you know. Uh, they're just gonna try to recreate like other games, like be other games that are better. But they didn't, so it kind of surprised me because even though it kind of gave me this little big planet vibe, because the characters are cardboard and papery. Remember that pa Paper Mario? Yeah. It wasn't. It's not quite like that, but it's closer to me. It what's the Sony? What's big the planet. Sony game uh, that's not that old? Yeah. Uh, oh, Little Big Planet. Torn. No. Torn. Torn. Tear. Tear away. Oh, uh, Tearaway. Uh, Isn't it Tearaway? Is it Tearaway? I think it's Tearaway. And it's on, it started right. on the Vita, and then now there's a PS4 like version, and that one's really good, by the way. I played that. Right. Anyway, that's cool. what this reminds me of because your little dude looks like he's made out of like, he's cut out of paper or something. He, yeah, he's a little cardboard guy with a, with a, with it looks like he's got a TV on his face. It's like just stickers and stuff, but you don't deal with stickers. Not that I've dealt with. Yeah. You can, you can change costumes, buy costumes yeah. uh, for the character, but it's, it's essentially just a platform, very simple. Uh, gameplay uh, got this on the mobile. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned that or not. That's how I have it. I'm playing mobile. It's a very uh, simple. Left finger uh, activates a on-screen kind of uh, stick, and you go left, right, up, down, back, and on the right hand side you have a jump stick. Yeah. Jump, jump button. Jump, yeah. jump, jump. And uh, you're just platforming your way right across from one side to the other. And uh, the the jumps are are fairly fun. Everything is well spaced. It really reminds me of some of the self-made. Um, levels i used to make in little big planet mm. uh i don't know if you did that much or not but we used to create our own little uh, levels because they aren't like just classic ripoffs of like uh mario levels yeah uh you know it's, it actually there's a little bit of physics involved sometimes mm -hmm. uh and how you have to jump backwards and forwards and the way you have to to land just right yeah uh so i i at first i was like i said at first i was kind of like oh this is going to be like just you know, it's just going to be like a rip off of everything else. But as, as I got to about level three, I found that I was just having fun and I just kept coming back to it. Mobile game. Yeah. Uh, if I had a few, and, if I had a few minutes, I'd fire it up and, uh, 
it's just good fun. Worth mentioning. Um, also too. also cute. available on Steam. Uh, you can play it now. It's actually called Paper Monsters. Paper Monsters Recut over there. Oh, and nice, uh, that just really probably means better resolution and all that stuff. But right. anyway, um, and, and this one you're collecting, uh, you're collecting uh, what you're collecting is is buttons. Yeah, I don't know why I'm collecting buttons, but I'm collecting them. And I'm also collecting paper clips. I don't know why I'm collecting paper clips, but I'm supposed to get three per level, and that's what I look for. Mm. Yeah, I always look for one of those too. Uh, by the right. way, this has a oh, we got eight reviews, so it's not enough to count up. They all look mostly positive. Like if you're gonna, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I can't do virtual joysticks on a phone or a tablet, I must play this, you know, with a traditional controller on a on, on a you know whatever. Then the PC version might be the one they want to get it. But. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't have any trouble uh, with this one. I I've played some before that had really poor uh, on screen controls, but mm-hmm. I basically was able just to roll my thumb for left and right, which is the majority of what I was doing, just left and right movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, there wasn't much movement needed for uh, up and down. Yeah. So just kind of rolling my thumb and hitting the jump was pretty much everything I needed, and it played just fine yeah. on mobile for me. There you go. Even if you don't like Steam. I don't like Steam. Then, uh, and they, you shouldn't. Yeah. Those bastards. I don't like Steam. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you what I do like, though, and I also got it on Steam. Not not that I had to have it be Steam, but that's just happened to be where I got it. I suckered in and picked up a game that I wasn't even going to do, but I got it. Would you like to hear Give what I you, got? You got to tell me what you got. <laughs> All right. I picked up Star Control Origins. Did you play, I don't know what that is. Did you play Star Control in the 90s? Is that familiar at all to you? That let me look. I that the name does not sound from it kind of sounds familiar, but it also sounds like everything from the nineties. But uh, let me see. Uh, no, I don't remember this one, especially Origins. I have to look to well, see. Well, Origins is too. new. That's the new one. But back in the day, there were Star Control, Star Control Two, and so on. Um, they're old games. And I used to love these games. I loved them, loved them, loved them. They were a hybrid sort of oh, wait. space adventure thing mixed with like a, some RPG elements. And they were ahead of their time as far as I was concerned. And they were also yeah, I funny. Yeah, re- I do remember this. They were funny. They were goofy. Uh, but they were also in some ways serious. But they were a fun little space romp adventure unit deal. <laughs> and, why, uh, why am I looking at one? They're They're like... Fighting flying swastikas. Uh, ooh, are there swastikas in this? I don't know. I don't be. know. It's, it's like a download a, a, at Abandonia, which is a place I often go to to pick up abandoned games. Yeah. Uh, it is Star Control 2, and one of the primary uh, graphics is your ship in space fighting giant metal swastikas. Really? Here, I'll, I'll put that in the put, Discord. Yeah, and, put and that in, in the, there. Oh, I'd, like the to, I'd like to see that. Yeah, that's, I will also that's news put that to me. into our chat. Well, uh, I have not, I have yet to fight a swastika in this new game, um, but this is a new game. It just came out. It came out in September, and um, it's a. Uh, you know what? I'm going to call it. I think they even call it this, but I'm going to just say straight up, it's a reboot in in a lot of ways. This isn't meant to be a sequel. This is like a. All right, let's bring it into the modern era. Let's you know, let's make a new game. In some ways, it feels very old. And in some ways, it feels brand spanking new right off the out of the gate. It's got something like sixteen uh, hours of dialogue, which wow. is a lot of dialogue, and it's and it's all pretty well done. Like different aliens you got to talk to, and different missions to do, and it's all voiced, which is kind of cool. Um, but the gameplay itself is very much akin to the old games. You explore planets, you take resources from those planets, you survey them, uh, you do story missions there. And you just do it in like this dune buggy uh, patrol thing that goes around the planet. These these almost like little big planets, small planets, and then mm-hmm. you take them back up to your ship and you sell that stuff at star bases. And then you can jump to different systems and discover planets, and then run into an alien there, and then get him to be your friend but or wait, fight him. Do you get do you get to taxi anybody? Uh, there are some things like that. Yeah, missions like that. Sure. It's honestly it's like a giant universe where in that universe you do about five things. Right. And those five things are just compelling enough for me to recommend it. It is definitely them saying, hey, let's not change too much from the formula that worked in the 90s. That may mm. f- leave some flat today where, you know, people are looking forward to things like Star Citizen with big, complex space opera epics. 
and that may not be right. enough for them. Okay, I totally 100% could see that with some people, but I am finding it delightful, uh, fun, silly, goofy. I found that a lot of these games during the 90s seemed to really deal. They, they were all trying to make you believe that you were Han Solo. Yeah. Well, that's what they like want. you're always a you always like a smuggler and you're trying to wheel and deal and you know, you'll make a deal. Yeah, I'll fly you over there. Well, do you remember uh Freelancer by chance? Yes. You, yes. Yeah, Freelancer. Uh, uh there's other ones. My brain's going dead. But those kinds of games are some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. One of my more favorite recent ones was um uh oh jeez. Rebel what's it called? Rebel, what's this called? No, I love that Reb game. Rebel, Rebel. Oh my gosh, Scott. Rebel, Rebel Galaxy. Data sorry, crew. Rebel Galaxy. They got a sequel coming this year called Rebel Galaxy Outlaw, which is looks even better. But <laughs> yes, uh, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. That's how, that's almost <laughs> double negative, is it not? Can just, you not? Just you about. Can't? Just about. It means he's a nice guy who's not doing anything wrong at the end of the day. Um, but right. no, it's like uh, you know these space mission games. Go out and. And do trade and, and mine an asteroid and sell that stuff and fight off a pirate and you know all I love those games. They're some of my favorite in the genre. I just love it, love it, love it. That's got a bunch of this in it, but it's a different perspective. The by the way, the ship control and flight is all top down camera stuff. It's not like yes. in the cockpit. So some people may may see that and go, Well, I don't want to play that. I actually prefer that. I get kind of annoyed. I love a simulator. I love flying in a simulator. Yeah. But I don't want too much combat when I'm in a simulator mode. I prefer it to be top down. Yeah, well, it if works you, better for if, me in space. If you like some top down, boy, have I got some good right. news for you. Oh man, I like me some top down. I love me some top down. Because this game's all about top down, and it pulls you out of it a little bit because the 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 solar system, for example, you start on in the actual Earth, uh, an Earth station around our solar system, and when you go up to another planet, you don't zoom way in and then have it change to a different view or something you actually bump into the <laughs> into the moon oh, or into the planet that, though. you kind of bump <laughs> off of it which is stupid um but i don't know there's something here there's something basic about the gameplay loop that gets me that that's pulling my strings right. that's yanking my my doodle <laughs> Yanking my doodle. Um, Fly me right into the planet. Yeah. I don't know what it is. Something there, though, and I like it. Uh, don't make my mistake, though. The very first moon I got on, which I think was near Mercury or something, they have these geysers uh, that are on the planet. If you drive on top of those geysers, they'll shoot you up in the air. And at first I thought, that's so cool. I wasn't paying attention to my ship life. It eventually killed me. So don't do that. I like um, this effect. Oh, I'm dead. But collecting stuff on planets, I think, is fun. Some may say it's tedious. I I like collecting things and clearing stuff out. I like it. I I like collecting stuff. I like I like I like that transition. I've played a lot of games like this. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what kind of game you're talking about, and uh, I like collecting resources. That's half the fun. Do you get to set up? Do you get to claim planets or anything like that? Yeah, but it's through other means like diplomacy and stuff. Like right now, I'm fighting with a, a alien race who I'm trying to get them to give me more control over the sector, and they're they're fighting me tooth and nail. And I gotta Come go. On. I gotta, and a lot of missions, right? She'll she'll give you missions. Right. You gotta go do them. There's tons of them. Great big systems to travel around. You need fuel, so don't travel too far. And, How's the ship sound? Does it make like this noise? Um. <laughs> Kinda. When you press the when you press the fuel a little bit, yeah. That's a de facto noise for those spaceships <laughs> back in the day. Yeah. That's before we had Battlestar Galactica. This is true. This is gonna satisfy me for a while though. I always have a hankering for something in space, and this is doing it at the moment. Um, I, I played a little Rebel Galaxy just for fun, just to kind of remind myself why I like that game a lot, and that was cool. And come next, well, I don't I forgot when they said that new one's going to be released, but that new the new Rebel Galaxy looks really good. Very right. excited about it. You know, the last time I've I know the last time I enjoyed negotiating. When's that? In a, in, in a game, hmm. it, it would have to be like uh, something really old, like Pirates or something. <laughs> pirates was good. You know yeah. what? Pirates is a yeah, lot like this game. Yeah, negotiate with the mayor to get his to get his wife. I mean, his daughter, right? Well, the thing. I think they're what you're describing is what these space games do, like. Sid Meier's was it? He did it right. Sid Meier's yeah, Pirates. Sid Meier's Pirates. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, that that whole thing is these games basically just in space, right? Like that's a really good 
a really good comparison to what what these space games I love are. And I, and I wasn't that because big of a fan. Because all you're doing is just just make islands instead of planets. Yeah. I mean, it's all you know. Other ships you're encountering are pirates. Yeah. No, I that's mean, totally it. Pirate ships. Or you've got yeah. a mission to go to a certain island and get a certain treasure or whatever. It's no yeah. different than saying you got to go get the, the Borgonite at the you know the fourth system of Zontar or whatever. Like it's the same. It's great. I love it. I even played. I got so down this like. I need a space game fix so bad last week. You weren't, yeah, we didn't right. have a show, so I didn't talk about it. But I played this. I played a bunch of EVE Online. They have a free to play mode now. Oh, uh, yeah. So I played a ton of that. I wish EVE Online was just a big single player sandbox. I hate that it's a giant multiplayer thing. I know that's what it is, and that's why people love it, and that's great. Good on all of you. But every time I play it, I just go, oh, I just wish this was like missions and me doing stuff, and I didn't have to talk to anybody. Because that's what I want out of these games. And I think right. Eve still looks incredible. I can't believe that game. Well, obviously, they haven't let it just sit. But 20, uh, two, two, uh, 2003, I guess, is when it launched. And it's beautiful still. Just a gorgeous mm. space game. So I played that a whole bunch. I played, um, oh, get this, Brian. Hey, give me your technical Wait, brain. Wait, back up. All right. So you always say this. I don't like Steam. You might not like it for what right. I'm about to tell you. Okay? Uh-oh. I went to download Elite Dangerous again. Oh, yeah, yeah. The new yeah. one. And right. uh, the newish one came out in what 2014, 2015, whatever. Right. And because uh, I just want to get back in and remind myself why I hate flying in it. <laughs> but I thought, you know what? I can run some missions. I can warp to another whatever. I can, you know, this is I'm trying to scratch an itch. So I go to install it, and I've got two versions of that. Uh, well, not two versions, but I have Elite Dangerous and I have Elite Dangerous Arena. Arena is oh. their one that's just like a dog fighting game, multiplayer thing. Right. And then there's Elite Dangerous, the big full-blown game. They're two separate downloads. I do yeah. not have Arena installed on my computer anymore. Hmm. I only have the other one, the real one. But when I launch it, it launches Arena. So Weird. I thought, well, maybe maybe I'm confused. I deleted everything and re re-downloaded and installed the game from scratch, which was another 40 gig or something. And same thing, launches Arena. I look at my launcher, huh. and I look at my, dr my drive, actually, where all my files are and stuff. There's no – Arena is not installed, yet there it is. So huh. I think there's something going on on Steam side where they think they're delivering me full-blown game, but really they're giving me Arena. Now, I went ahead and installed – I reinstalled Arena and uninstalled the main one to see, well, maybe Arena will be the main game. Like they've just swapped places or something. Did that, no dice, same deal. It's just Arena again. No matter what I do, I'm playing Arena. I you know, I always want to, I, I, I played, I think I played a demo of Elite Dangerous at some point. But I've played it. I remember thinking, God, this is beautiful. And yeah. I got bored really quick. Yeah. Well, I, it, it, you can get bored in there. But there's some things I really like about it. I like the expanse of space where it's just me flying forever. Like There's oh, something yeah. about it. But it looks cool too. I don't understand why that I'm having that problem. So if anyone in the chat has That's any great. idea, I've tried everything short of like, I mean, I haven't gotten on some forums and gone crazy with like asking, but nobody else seems to be having this problem. It's the weirdest thing. And so I didn't even get a chance to play that. But I played, you know, a few other space games. I played a build a little bit more of Stellaris, which is a huge time commitment. So, you know, it's basically uh, yeah. Civ in space. Uh, I played Sins of the Solar Empire again for a little while, which is a Ooh. really great game from like 2012 or something. Um, it's, it, I just love those games so much that I just went down this tear and then I got myself in trouble with that. So Can't anyway, that's what I settled on. I settled on Star Control uh, Origins. It was fun. It's smart. Yeah, I like it's a good it. choice. Brian, let's talk now about Friday the 13th. I heard this came out for free on PS4. Is that why you got it? Is that what happened? Uh, that's right. Uh, it is it is a new month over at uh, PlayStation Plus. And if you are a subscriber currently, you can get Friday the 13th always to the end of the month. Uh, I I really wanted to get this game last year for the PC when it came out. I was so excited. Everything leading up to it looks so fun and so good. To, to actually be able to play as Jason Voorhees uh, and, and stalk the campers that just appealed to me just like i was like yeah that's going to be so much fun to put yourself in that place and you get to play possibly is the, is the campers uh and i was super excited i never picked it up though i just i just i don't know why it just didn't happen is there a single player so component here or is it just multiplayer uh is is no it's you have offline 
and you can play against bots, which is how I had, which is the way I played it. Because okay. whenever there's an option to play offline for a multiplayer game, I always play offline first, just to make sure that if I do go into an online environment, I don't annoy a bunch of people by being such a noob. Yeah. So that's exactly what I did. I hopped on. There's offline mode. You can play against bots. And I did that. And I did not get to play as much as I wanted to. It's the reason why it's the last on my list because there's really not too much to talk about yet. I have the whole month of uh, October leading up to Halloween to play this game. So far, I'm having a lot of trouble, though. Uh, I decided to play as Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, and I cannot seem to kill even one camper. I played somewhere around 45 minutes. I did not kill a single camper. They killed me twice. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm doing it wrong because I've I've seen the movies and just rarely it's usually like you know six to six for Jason and like one for somebody else. Yeah. So I know the odds are wrong right now. Well, what's that uh, other game? So, Dead Tell Day or Tell? Uh, Dead Tell. Yeah. Dead. 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 Dead, uh, dead by Daylight. That's it. Dead by Daylight. That's yeah. it. It's the same. Yeah, it's kind of that same idea, but this has the flavor. Of, uh, the this has the license series. yeah this has, right right this has like the legit name that they can oh my gosh this game exactly. is violent holy it, crap it it like i said i didn't get to play it very much yet i look forward to playing it much more but i just had a report in to say what the crap yeah why is jason having so much trouble killing some bots did i accidentally <laughs> set it to too high a difficulty level i don't know yeah but uh, I'm doing something wrong for sure because uh, I, I couldn't keep up with them. They're like they're running, which is fine because it makes sense because that's what always happens. It's funny because they have some catch-up mechanics in it. Mm -hmm. uh, if I get in the water and you can't see me, then I move really fast. Mm. But if I'm on the land, I move a little bit slower than they do. Uh, and I have certain powers, I have the abilities to locate them w within a certain area. If they're outside, I can easily see, you know, a little circle on the screen that kind of tells me where they're at. Uh, or if they're in a house, it'll kind of give me an idea where they're at in the house. But so far, I've tried cutting the power on these cabins that the people are in. I've tried busting through the windows. All it does is freak them out. Sometimes they run out, which is good. And I can't ever get through the doors, so I don't know... If I haven't learned all the skills I need to learn yet, but I am failing so far. But How come he has uh, teleportation? That when does he have that in the movies? He can't oh, teleport. That, no, that I do like. I do like this. So he has teleportation. So that's good. So if you don't see him, uh, then yes, he can teleport. Around. Okay. So there's some balancing things that go on there, and the reason why is because uh, if if the campers <laughs> make it to the police officer, <laughs> the campers make it to the police officer, then you lose. So it makes sense for you to be able to jump around faster. Sorry, I just watched him tear the arms off a teenager. This is really over the top, man. This it is, is, and I want to see that wonderful, pleasurable. I want to stab some. I want to stab one teenager who is copulating with another teenager. Stab, skewer both of them, like you know all the movies you see. I want to be able to do all those things. I may yeah. have a problem. Yeah, you may have a problem. I mean, I like a good horror movie too, so I'm with you. I mean, this I stuff's just I'm silly just, to I'm me. I'm just curious. But, it looks but like this fun. is really okay. So two two thoughts after watching some of this little like I don't know if this is just a tutorial or if this is a single player mission or whatever, but he's just going after these people almost like stealth missions. Um, yes, it's the animation's a little herkum jerkum. It, I, I it's know. not the greatest, but since everything is so dark, you can't see much anyway. Okay, so it's not that big a deal. I mean, if it plays well, it's all I care about. But yeah, the, it, it looks a little ganky, but it is it's got a good mood to it. Giving him supernatural powers like teleportation and stuff does that take you out of it at all? Does that feel weird? Not not at all. It actually makes me feel good because it's like you always wonder in movies, how did he get there? Mm. There's something supernatural going on about him, so it just kind of feels natural. It makes sense because. Whenever Jason is in the water, he moves really fast, which makes sense because if you ever watch the movie, it's like Jason can be nowhere near you, but if he's in the water, boom, he's right there. Yeah. So uh, it, it works for me. Oh, my gosh. He's about to. What's he going to do with this kid? Hold on. He's got him by the crotch. Oh, my <laughs> gosh, dude. <laughs> it is brutal, this game. It is. All right. I'm very excited. Okay. Well, there's the I'm game. I'm very excited to get good. How okay. About that? All right. Look, man, I can't, I can't tell you no. <laughs> No. All can't. right. Uh, Battle Royale. That's the hot thing, right? Guess what? Battle right Royale. Well, now, yeah, that's the hot new thing. At least it is for me. I have often said I wish Battle Royale games were not just all shooters and they could do something kind of creative with them. And there's been a few attempts here and there that have been interesting. But the one I have been following for a while and been perhaps the most excited about is the guys who make Battle Right. 
Yes, uh, which we love. Which we love already. I already like his like an arena fighter, a little bit of a MOBA ish sort of experience. Uh is uh they 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 put out an announcement saying, Hey, we're gonna make a new mode in our game. It's gonna be called Battle Roy- Royale and it's you know, Battle Royale with our characters and how are they gonna get away with that? How are they not gonna get Oh, they have to use that name. Well, it doesn't matter. It's right. not it's copyrighted or anything, so they can do it. Right. Um, but the uh, and it's perfect because battle right royale. Get it? They've just you know. Yeah, thrown the royale I there. got it. Uh, yeah. So a top down <laughs> arena fighter kind of approach to the the genre is an interesting idea. And I don't. Again, there's probably many examples of somebody trying this or doing this and succeeding to some level or another, but. I haven't played anything that that has come close to being something I would like. Uh, I really like this a whole lot. You jump out of a dragon, you land on this island. Uh, there's a big giant blue wall coming in, you know, slowly but surely. It's all those things you know, but the perspective of a top-down isometric fighter or a shooter style, you know, fantasy sort of game is right. just enough different for me to to have that be interesting because i'm kind i mean if i'm honest i'm just kind of tired of the shooter stuff i just not i don't want to play fortnite no interest it's a little overdone don't really want to play PUBG that much anymore i the new black ops thing looks really good but again i don't know how much of that i'm gonna be playing um i don't know yet but this is really fun um i even bought into it 17 bucks to get in early the advantage of doing that is you get some extra stuff uh, along with you've unlocked all the characters forever, so no matter who they add later, you just have it. This was the same as they did with their Battle Right, uh, you know, the main game. And um, yeah, I, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, but it's not. I mean, there's not a whole lot to explain here because it really is what you think it is. It's yeah. It's a giant map, and you run around and find cool stuff. The armor cache stuff and and weapons are are little upgrades to your abilities and and you know better trinkets that give you more power when you use them. And you kill other like dudes, this. and you try to be the last guy standing, and that's that's I it. I do like this dragon you're riding on, though. Yeah, that that's dragon in the beginning is pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, it's like a, a Treyu or whatever. Yeah. Um, you have mounts as well, so you have a uh, two speeds of running. One's just running, and then if you get on the mount, you're much faster. That's pretty cool, so I like mounts. And there's a little shop guy you can talk to, and he'll sell you extra life stuff or... Uh, you know, bonus items for gold, get gold from killing dudes and opening up chests and stuff. And it's just just a, like in real life. Yeah, it's just what you everything I'm saying. You're like, yeah, well, duh, Scott, this is Battle Royale. I get it. We played those before. Yeah, no, it, it is. That's what this is. Uh, and there's not a whole lot more to say, except it might just be more my kind of take on the genre. And it may just be this camera angle. Because I love it. I like it. It's like a little yeah. Diablo kind of deal, right? It's just sort of a top I like down. their art style, too. It's, it's, it's very... I yeah. like it. Yeah, it's very nice. And it seems to be well-received so far. So uh, I hope they keep going and, and things go well for them and they can take advantage of this this burgeoning genre that is... You know, here's the other thing. If you want, you can be that guy just like in all the shooters. You can hide and wait for the circle to close and then find another place to hide if you want. I mean, that's still a strategy you can use. Yeah. I don't like it. I'd rather just freaking fight. But yeah. Anyway, well, I, who's it's mowing? according to what I'm playing against, and 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 to what, uh, whose whose skin I'm trying to get under. Yeah. Good point. That's, that's the that's the that's the sub game for me. Yeah. And you may yeah, and you'll find some of that here. Also, right. who's mowing your lawn? I hear a lawn being mowed. Oh, is, that, is somebody mowing the lawn? You hear that? I love that sound. If you, if you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah, they're mowing my lawn. I love that sound. And well, when you... I say they're they're mowing my lawn, I mean my fiance who's outside sweating in the hot heat while I'm in here doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I told her not to do it. That's awesome. I said, give me a minute. Yeah, yeah. She said, I, w- I want to do it. And I'm like, all right. Oh, uh, Tondra Grossa, thank you for the reminder. There's that top-down Battle Royale game from the Cyanide and Happiness uh, cartoon thing. Oh. That looked, I saw the trailer for that. That looked really good, too. So, yeah, there's some... They, where did they show that? The P, I think it was the PC Gaming um, uh, E3 conference they showed that. But, yeah, right. I'm, I'm into that stuff. So, bring it on. All right. Well, that's our games. Hey, Brian, do you want to play Guess My Game? Oh, my God. Can I guess your game? Yeah, but we have to play this first. It's a me, Mario. <laughs> All right. That's our sound. That's our time. That means that we got to go do this now. I'm going to play a clip for you. You're going to have to try to guess what game this is. Uh, a game that I used to put a lot of quarters in, so there's a hint for you. Okay. Oh, quarters. That means it was arcade and it was quarters, so yeah. it wasn't uh, Dave and Buster's. No, it was not Dave and Buster's. 
Uh, it was probably more like some Bally Midway place. I can't remember where I played it a lot, Jace. but Jace. my dad also owned arcades, but this might have been right after he got out of that business. So I'm not sure. Mid 90s to mid 80s, somewhere around there. Ish. Uh, Ish. So here's the file. You see if you can figure it out. Oh, wait, I know this. You already know it? Oh, crap. Do you know it? Yeah, I've played it a million times. What the crap is it, though? It's got to be a pack game, right? Well, I don't know, is it? I don't want to give it away. Listen to this. It's a Namco game. Oh. Any ideas? Any guesses? It's a Namco game for sure. Some of the I just don't know which someone one. Someone in the chat got it. Uh, it is 1984's Pac-Land. 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 It was a nice. Pac-Man game where you side-scrolled your way through worlds, sort of Mario style, left to right, and uh, you had legs and arms and stuff. Yes. God, I remember this game. Yeah. Basically, the cartoon. I couldn't, I couldn't place it, though, because I was like, oh, my gosh, because the... The audio is just like another level mm -hmm. of of immersion mm -hmm. once you got to that point. It was yeah, just... totally. And it's very um, uh, how am I trying to say this? It's very uh, uh, well, you know, you remember the cartoon, the Pac Man cartoon yes. in the eighties? Do I remember the Pac Man? Of course, of course I did. And I watched the the holiday special every year too. What are you talking about? I think yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot that existed. This game is is. I think that the show was based more on this than the than the game, yeah, or than the original right. Pac-Man because because right. he was a full body guy and he had kids and a wife and and the ghosts right. all had wore hats and were a little bit more emotive and stuff and at the, at the head he had the pimp hat yeah totally had pimp hats dude <laughs> with the, with the feather sticking out of it yeah it totally did it's a total pimp hat <laughs> pimp ghosts and uh, it's um probably not a great game if I played it now I would probably think it's not as good but at the time I thought it was really great. I yeah I think yeah I think it's all right I, you probably would you probably have gotten this in a Namco museum pack right wouldn't that yeah you probably think that would come in one of those things yeah I'd probably go now and get one in some Namco thing right but uh yeah it, you can get it on Mame or wherever you get your uh, retro games these days for a game made in '84 though it was pretty innovative um you got those you got that one cool helmet if you were smart so you had to push right. on like a box or a uh not a box like a um. Uh, what am I trying to think of? Like a okay, like a tree yeah, stump like or a, a cube? Just just one of the objects in the world, and right, it, right, right. it would poop out a hat. Then you put the hat on, they could dump stuff on your head, and it wouldn't hurt you. Uh, yeah, this so. this is totally them trying to go. Uh, we want some of that Mario money. Yeah, yeah, basically. basically. Basically, how can we do that? Yeah, it was cool though. Oh, and there's a little. I fairy. loved it. I liked it. Yeah, yeah, it did it did the job, which is all we're really we looking got it, for. We got it done. Brian, uh, I'm going to play yours now. Let's we'll see if I can figure out what Do this it. is. I have not cheated and looked ahead. I have no idea. So here it is. Let's find out. Let's now. see if I can remember what it was. That, is that punching or a typewriter? Yes. Okay. It's, uh, that's punching. Not a typewriter. I was gonna say typing of the dead, but I don't think that's it. <laughs> it sounds like some side scrolling beat em up thing. Is it? It kind of is. Okay, let me get the arrow down. Is Celix Mice getting smacked? Is it a uh, final fight? No! Not final fight. Okay, hold on. No! I'll give you a hint. Okay, give me a hint. It's, uh, it's 10 years old. Oh, 10 years old is all? It's only 10 years old. I, that's the reason why I was, kind of, I, was, I was thinking when I was going through games. Like, I was like, what game is, is celebrating its 10th year this year? And I'm like, I'll bet I'll be surprised and think these games are much more recent. But it's 10 years ago eight, this game oh, was eight. about. Okay, so the 08 would have been 360 PS3 era. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was um, even on. It was it was on everything. It was on the 360. It was on the it was on the PlayStation 3, the Windows, the PlayStation Portable. They even had a Macintosh operating system version. Okay, that 
the sounds and the girl and stuff make it sound very it's japanese right yeah no it was developed by a behemoth how's that tell you oh uh but it's got a flavor to it i could see that i have no idea what that is right what is it tell it, me what that is, is it is you're not going to believe that it's been 10 years since we first saw castle crashers Oh, that's Castle Crashers? And also, yeah. what, 10 years ago? Are you kidding? 10 years ago. Holy smokers, dude. That is 2008. Because that. that's what I kept thinking. I was like, I need, I was like, I was, I was pulling through my nostalgia yeah. in my mind. I was like, yeah, let's go way back. And I was like, you know what? I wonder what is almost nostalgia that I would be shocked. And that's Castle shocking. Crashers, I was like, wow. Yeah, that's shocking. Years. You know, it's maybe because yeah. I saw that would come up here and there all through up till 2013 and new consoles. Also, the PC version ended up on my hard drive somehow. Like, it was just always sort of around. So I just never associated it with a thing that came out that long ago. That's nuts. Right. Ten Chat years. got it, though, baby. Yeah, good job, guys. Well done. Well, actually, they said Alien Hominid. Did any of them actually get the right one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tyros X7. Oh, he got it. The first oh, time Castle I saw credit. someone get it. Yeah, there it is. You're yeah. right. Uh, I think Tesorial deserves some extra credit, though. Metal, metal slug. Uh, definitely kind of a metal slug uh, vibe to it mm -hmm. as well. Uh, all right. Well done. Jeez, that was a good one, dude. That was really good. It's good. That game, I think I liked that game. I don't know if I liked, liked it, though. Yeah, I didn't play it to excess, but I was I was certainly charmed uh, by that uh, by the games that were heading in that direction. Those it was it was the first one I really saw that had that that kind of style. Yeah. Uh, that I remember from that era that just really grabbed my attention. Yeah, the kind of kind of cartoon looking thing was pretty yeah. neat at the time. But I guess I've just yeah. never been a fan of the side scrolling beat 'em up genre in general. Yeah. Like everyone raves about the old X Men arcade game or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game that was so big for a while. Battle mm -hmm. Toads, all that stuff. It it was just a genre I never really liked. Even as old as Double Dragon, it just wasn't interesting to me. Um, I love the beat 'em ups. I, no, I don't. I especially like beat 'em ups that allow you to stop, go into a a, a building, and uh, and and you know buy yourself some power ups and head back out to the street. Oh, that's like Narc. Remember Narc? Yeah. Narc was cool. I like Narc. Narc. Yeah, that was a bloody game. It had all kinds of guts in it. People yeah. were, people were freaking out about Narc back in the day. I remember. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, that's a fun little game we like to play. It's now time for the news. Yes, that's right, everybody. It's time for us to take a look at a news story from the week that matters. How about this one? Red Dead Redemption 2's PS4 exclusive content has been revealed. What? You have three weeks to go until Red Dead Redemption 2's release. Sony has revealed the time exclusive content that will be available in the game's PlayStation 4 store for its customers. And while it's hard to tell from the descriptions, most of it seems like small potatoes. So it really isn't that big of a deal. Total of four items will be exclusive to PS4 players in Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, at least for some time. This stuff will end up on Xbox, I'm sure, and possibly if there's ever a PC release, there will be. Everyone just with me right now, quickly cross your fingers, pray to whatever god you, you pray to, and ask that there be a PC version of Red Dead 2, please. Good luck. It has to be, dude. They have to. They've made too much money with the PC version of GTA 5. No way they don't. No well, way. What did we say about the first one? We said the same thing. No, we didn't Can't say that because back then it was written for Power PC, which was 360, and that right. stupid Emotion Engine chip, which was in the PS3, that was weird-ass hardware. They didn't have the motivation to then make a third port for a whole different platform. Now, this Xboxes and PS, uh, PS4s are basically PCs. They're x86 architecture. They use GPUs that we're all familiar with. A PC port would be nothing to them. Nothing. Too lazy. Not going to happen. They'll do it. They want the money. They're not going to leave that money on the table, dude. You know what? Right now, let's make a bet. I'll bet let's you. Let's do it. Let's make a bet. Let's make a bet. I'll bet you uh, just some $15 indie game on Steam of each right. other's choice if one of us wins. That's the right. bet. I say that they will have. They will put out a PC version, and I'll even okay. make it more specific. We'll have, to put a time, we'll have to put a timeline on this because... I mean, you can't come back in 20 years from now going, hey, they finally did it, man. They, they finally put it on the PC. Pay up, buddy. No, it'll be, I'll say, a year to 18 months maximum. Maximum of 18, 18 months. months. Year is what I'm thinking, right. though. Because that's what they right. did with that's what they did with the PC version of uh, GTA V. Same exact pattern. I'm telling you, that's just what happens. They're doing it. 
It's mostly wishful thinking on my part, but that's our bet. Right. We virtually handshaked on it. <laughs> Here, shake in the air. Shake. See, there you go. <laughs> see? Okay. Uh, let's see. I guess I should tell people what these are. Uh, total of four items, as I mentioned before. The Grizzlies Outlaw Outfit consists of a long wool-lined coat over a leather vest and will be available both in the game story mode on launch day and Red Dead Online when it debuts in November. Uh, the three other items are Red Dead Chestnut Arabian Horse, the Alligator Skin Ranch Cutter Cutter sal uh, Saddle. Yeah, the saddle. And the High Roller Double Action Revolver. Uh, these will not be available until Red Dead goes live online. So the online service, which happens in November, you won't actually get those till then. Um, hmm. You let's see. It doesn't say whether you'll be able to use them outside of either mode. Blah, blah, blah. All three of those uh, items will be exclusive to PS4 users for the first 30 days of Red Dead's online release. After which they could become available on Xbox One, but it's unclear when or what. Uh, they asked Rockstar for clarification, and they said they'd update it when they found out, but they don't know yet. Red Dead Redemption is out on October 26th, PS4, Xbox One, with Red Dead Online scheduled to go live sometime in November. And about a year from now, expect a PC release. That's me talking, not them. <laughs> That's me. Not them, me. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. Par par park your car I, and wait. It's going to be is, awesome. This is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. I'm saying no because I'm daring them to do it. Yeah. I don't lose either way. If I have to pay you a $15 game yeah. to, uh, to give the mojo to make this happen by being a doubter yeah i'd pay that 15 dollars. you'd do gladly. it gladly okay yeah all right i'm i'm trying i'm trying to i'm trying to push i'm trying to push the fate that way by disagreeing i'll be shocked if it doesn't come out on pc within a year right utterly completely totally shocked shocked uh this is the next part which is an email that's what we do here is we do an email would you like to hear an email how about an email oh my god if you don't read the email i don't know what i'm gonna do i know i don't know if i'm gonna be able to make it if i don't read it right this freaking second so here it is this is an email from listener cindy the cat oh cindy the cat meow uh, do you know this person you no it's okay. cindy the cat meow oh okay i got it uh it says scott and brian i suppose this is uh, the police. Uh, sorry, this is the police two. Is still mostly an aim management game with some added mini games. Oh, yeah. uh, I think the game you want is called Phantom Doctrine. It just came out, and this email's a little, you know, maybe half a month old. But anyway, it just right. came it's, out. It's referencing something we referred to not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, not too right. long ago. It says uh, it just came out, and from what I have seen, though I haven't bought it myself, it seems like a cross between XCOM and Invisible Ink. Love the show. All right. That is a combo I'm into. So we're going to look this up. Right. Uh, so we, we thought it was This is the Police 2. And she's saying Phantom Doctor. No, she's saying, I said I didn't like This is the Police 2. I played it. Oh, I got you. And I wanted it to be more like what she thinks I want. And that's what ah. she's saying is she thinks I want this. This came out in April, oh, actually. I can see that. Yeah, because you didn't like the silly art style of this, this the police, right? You didn't like that. that. It wasn't just the art. The art style was fine. It was the pace, and you, you spent a lot of time in an office looking at paper. It sucked. Uh, paper. I wanted to like it. And I feel bad because the right. developer sent me a code, and I'm not trying to be a turd, but I just didn't like it. Aren't you, though? Uh, well, a little bit. I'm a bit of a turd. Uh, it Later. says, uh, let's see, 40 hour campaign, life consuming espionage sim simulator, Phantom Doctrine, strategic turn based res uh, espionage thriller, the peak of the Cold War, uh, it's set in 1984, deep single player story uh, campaign, next generation turn based combat, uh, expanded it looks battle. Good. Yeah, this looks all right. And this got good reviews. People like it. They like it lots. It came out August the 14th, so it's fairly new. No, oh, I thought I saw April, didn't I? April. Oh, August you're right. Four. August. No, no, no. You're right. I, I read that as April. I'm blind. No, you're totally right. Uh, yeah, it's got a dark. It's dark and moody as opposed to this to the police too, which is more uh, stylized. There's a good word. Definitely looks like uh, a little bit of inspiration from Invisible Ink, which is one of my favorite games ever. Yes. Uh, so I'm gonna check it out. Thirty nine bucks right now. We'll maybe put that on a watch for sale kind of thing. And see if I can't get my hands on that little buggy boy there. It seems it seems it. Don't all right. Don't forget to go to the deal site. Is there any deal? And uh, put that on your watch list. Oh, is that how you do it? I have to sign up for something though, right? 
Uh, no, you just uh, well, uh, if you're not, I, if you haven't signed up for Is There Any Deal, I would recommend it. Uh, I certainly use it quite often. As a matter of fact, I just saw Elite Dangerous is on for seven dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, but what will it install? Uh, Am I going to end up with Arena for a third time? I can't answer that. <laughs> All I can tell you is what it's listed as. Oh, yeah, look, uh, the lowest it's ever been is 2869. Oh, this is cool. Why don't I use this website? I have no idea. I tell you about it almost every week. Is there any deal and how long to beat? Those are some of my favorite places to uh, to research my games and see if I'm paying the right price and will I have the time to play to that's, completion. That's legit. I will mm -hmm. use it more. Thank you for your email, Cindy Cat. The Cindy Cat. Cindy the Cat, sorry. Just want to get the Cindy name right. Cindy the Cat. Syndication. What? Anyway, hey. 27. So they have uh, good old games. Great place to buy games yeah. from, by the way. Yeah. And uh, was had the Phantom Doctrine Deluxe Edition not too long ago for $27.09. Yeah. So it has been cheaper. Yeah. That's the deal, right? I got to get in. Right. I got to sign in on this. I got to do this. Oh, look at some of these deals Ooh. here. Oh, yeah. There's some deals to have. You can have some deals. It's some deals to have. <laughs> Give uh, me the games. All right. I'm going to dig in later. I don't know why I don't use this. It's dumb. It seems like a thing I should use. Look, I can get not basketball. Unless you, just, not I, unless you just hate your money. I can get basketball hoop for 88 <laughs> cents right now. That's pretty Ooh. good. Okay. Don't go Don't go down the rabbit hole of is there any deal. Yeah. But <laughs> if you're looking for something specific, it's definitely the place to go. But, yeah, you can spend all day. Hey, what's this cheap pizza crap? Yeah. I got that. I'm yeah. taking that one, too. Ooh, Magicka 2 for $6.24. That's not bad. Yeah. All right. Rabbit hole. Bye-bye, do Wacky Planet soundtrack, 99 cents. Hey, giving it away. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, this has all been great. Uh, that's going to do it for the show, everybody. Big thanks for listening. We appreciate it. Frogpants.com slash B-O-O-P. If you came to the show new today, I noticed uh, new names in here today. That's where the podcast goes. This is primarily a podcast. That's mostly what we do here is record a podcast for audio listeners. But we do this video thing because we think you're cool, too. So uh, if you want more information and want to know what's going on over there, you can go check that out over at uh, frogpants.com slash boop. And as always, you can email us, boopshow at gmail.com. Just like Cindy the Cat, boopshow at gmail.com. We are on Twitter, at boopshow. Brian's at the Brian Dunaway. I'm at Scott Johnson. And uh, again, the show is at boopshow. Uh, I think that's going to do it. Uh, listeners live, stick around. We're giving away a couple of free go uh, game codes today. You could be a wiener. Free goats. Free goats. So don't go anywhere. Uh, that'll be in just a minute. I guess that's it. Brian, anything else? Am I forgetting anything? No? Uh, you know what? Uh, I think you should play some uh, magic. Oh, magic. All right. I'm going to get into the magic arena. You get into the something else. Thanks, everybody, right, for listening. <laughs> we'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. I don't like steam. Well, that last one had, had a delay. <laughs> and you had to get it in there. <laughs> All right. Um, shall we do a giveaway? Shall we give away? <laughs>